Today I want to discuss Marplots with you, because I realized that in my YouTube career, spread over about 60 public videos and let's say 40 or so deleted in pure shame, I talked about the Dutch version of eBay, from the Dutch version of eBay, from the Dutch version of eBay, without ever giving a clear explanation of what it is. Well, what Marplots is. In this video I want to cover the following topics. I'll give a quick and badly researched history lesson on Markplatz, then try to explain how the platform functions in 30 seconds or so, and then want to focus on some interesting things I've seen over the last period when it comes to vintage computer pricing. I call this a rant, but don't expect too much. And finish with a very quick look at some of the treasures I found on this mysterious Dutch platform. Let's start with the history, because in 1997, Markplatz was founded, with the intention of being a sort of pinboard on which you could find things being sold locally, like cars, appliances or books. This in itself was not revolutionary, as bulletin boards were already around on older computer platforms. These were for instance called BBSs. In the same year as its founding, the company Het Goed comes into the picture. Het Goed is a company that is sort of similar to one like Goodwill in America. They own a bunch of thrift stores here in the Netherlands. Het Goed bought Marktplatz from its founders for about 273,000 euros. They made sure Marktplatz got some updates, like adding the option to bid on listed items. Het Goed owned Marktplatz for seven years. But when eBay showed up in 2004 and offered to buy the platform for 225 million euros, they sold it. This is why I like to refer to Marktplatz as the Dutch version of eBay, although you could also refer to it as a Dutch version of a different site. I'll come back to that later. Currently, Marktplatz is owned by a Norwegian investment group, as eBay sold it in 2020 as part of restructuring the company. On the Wayback Machine you can see what Marplatz looked like in the year 2000. I believe this doesn't differ too much from the way it looked back in 1997. Overall, Marplatz is a site that hasn't changed much. I wanted to briefly look at prices asked for vintage computers at the start of Marplatz when they were a little bit less vintage, but that would involve taking into account the Gilder, which would prove a little bit too complex and boring for a subject that already risks not being nominated for any online awards. How does Markplatz work? Well, that is pretty straightforward to explain, and I want to do that briefly. I think it is best to explain this in a manner of how Markplatz differs from eBay. Well, Markplatz fits very well into the Dutch picture of a love for trading, as a country well known for its trademark look look don't buy, kijk kijk niet kopen, and the Dutch tradition of selling goods on the streets on the day we celebrate our dearly beloved monarch's birthday. The trading part of Marktplatz takes place in the messaging part of the website or app. When you place a bid, you actually send an automatically generated message with the amount you want to bid. In the following message pre, if all goes well, you agree on the price, moment of pickup or shipping costs and seal a deal. Or as things also have a tendency to go, with us being Dutch and connoisseurs of the art of swearing, you get a beautifully worded I do not accept that offer you. <laughs> Marktplatz is also a platform that you can try many tricks on that I can attest to have used myself. For instance, you will find that in almost every listing, people write the sentence that is similar to this one. In response to the question of what is your maximum price, there is no reply. Also, with this being a platform focused around the messaging part of the website, you can try to place a bid via a direct message, which cuts out the ability of other interested buyers to overbid you. This can also be used against you by the seller, as they will message you back that they have gotten an offer via direct message that was much higher than the amount you offered. Before I forget, it's good to mention that offers or bids on Marktplatz, unlike eBay, are not final, so you can bid and not come through as much as you like. Another tactic I heard about is people using other accounts to place bids on their own listings, trying to get actual buyers to spend more. I've seen people do this and then later deleting the bids. Like I said in my previous video, I like to look for sellers of a certain type. The ones that in let's say a cleaning spree stumble upon a certain item from the past they would like to see go to an enthusiast for a nice price. The ones I stay away from mostly and want to discuss a little bit later are the sellers that think they have struck a gold mine in finding their old NES or C64. Can I say, looking back at my previous video, aside from the nice comments I got, that I also was delighted to see that someone thought that my clearly fake course on the Dutch version of eBay was real, and that that video was clearly clickbait. Also, in a comment under that video, someone said that they thought that Marktplatz was more similar to Craigslist, which I have to say is also a very good comparison, due to the funny and sometimes creepy things you can find on there. 
Haven't seen a video though on creepy things on Markplatz, but have seen plenty of those covering Craigslist. Markplatz is also known for being a place you are easily scammed on, as there are lots of scammers active on the platform. Oh, as well as that probably a lot of things sold are stolen goods, but that is for other folks to cover in videos. Now I wanted to focus a bit on vintage computer prices on the Dutch version of eBay, as I've seen a steady increase in the amount of people asking, let's call it interesting prices, for their old IT equipment. I have of course also seen a steady increase in the actual prices being paid for vintage computers, as I have found myself paying increasingly more for adding a new system to my collection. Examples being my recent purchase of an MZ 80 k a computer I talk about a lot, and which, by the way, has already proven to be worth every penny in the amount of fun I had messing with that system. And I think that that is the most important. Just make sure you have fun with the things you buy. And let me be clear in saying that, as I will now be sort of reminiscing on the prices I see on Markplatz, please note that I believe in the freedom of asking any price for an item you lawfully own and want to sell, as I think you will see too that more and more people are willing to pay those prices. A quick side note, uh, because I need to add something to my explanation on the Dutch version of eBay. Because now we will be taking a look at asked prices on listings, but I have to tell you that the most common way of uh, selling stuff on the Dutch version of eBay is via the bidding system. So it's, uh, you see it a little bit more often, but it's quite, it's more common to see listings that you have to bid on than uh, listings with an uh, asking price. But in the coming part, we'll focus on the asking price. A good starting point is to show computers that actually sell for a lot of money, like Commodore Pets. Take this 8032, which already had an offer for 220 euros, and is said to be a non-working condition. But then you find this listing of someone asking more than 130 euros more for this North Star Advantage, without even stating if they tested the computer. I looked at this seller's reviews as those can sometimes show that a person sells and buys a lot of old computers, which is not the case with this seller. So it's safe to assume this is someone not too well known with old computers. This listing was also asking a high price for the equipment, but came with 22 clear pictures and a long description. Asking price of 750 euros, but when you look at the completed listings on the actual eBay, you will see that they sell for quite some money. The listing on Marplatz had a faulty monitor, which in my opinion makes the asking price a bit high, but a lot of money being paid for Apple items is not rare of course. As someone had already offered 525 euros for this Apple Pippin. This listing with an IBM 3286 had a way too high asking price with 350 euros for a monitor, Model M and a computer. I would say that 150 euros would already be on the high side for this. I on average spent I think 50 bucks on most of my PS2 computers. They have proven to be reliable though and most of them in my collection work very well. Interestingly the 3286 was my first vintage computer I got. I paid 70 bucks or so for a lot similar to this which included a lovely reference diskette. This seller complained about people joking in messages in the description. 70 bucks offered for this net server by HP. Take into account that this could be a bit by the seller, by the way. I have found that these Toshiba laptops are prone to being asked ridiculous prices for, which is a shame as I would like to have a T1200. I bought one for 20 bucks a long time ago, but that one was sadly very dead. This seller is asking a humble 250 euros for it. They show it working, but write in the description that the buyer will probably know more about it than they do. Certainly when it comes to what the item might be worth. I find it interesting that I see in a lot of listings that people write that they don't know a lot about the thing they are selling. Didn't they use it back in the day? Does user knowledge fade away so quickly? Well, of course, 40 years is not quick, but I always wonder about that. Scrolling on as I do on most days, this interesting homebrew project with an Amiga 500 mounted in a normal case. 800 is a lot, but then a lot is included. I would say if you do the brewing at home yourself, you can do this for less money and have more fun maybe. This Epson PHX is listed for 300 euros and is a listing that, like most listings that have an, again in my opinion, not realistic asking price, been on the platform for more than a year now. The seller tried the paid for options on Marplatz to push it to the top of searches every day as it kept appearing in my daily emails showing my saved searches. Less complete PX8 lots on eBay seem to sell for around $150. 300 euros for this 128 without any software or disk drive. I would say 300 is doable for a lot with cassettes, floppies, a 1571 boxed, cartridges, documentations, and a clean computer. I'll change this opinion later in the video. A Macintosh Ad for 500 euros. 
600 euros for this Apple II. I think 300 would be easily doable for this lot. Then this computer that, to be honest, I'm jealous I missed out on. It came with a drive emulator, terminal and other nifty stuff and appears to have sold for 275 euros. Oh well, that is the highest offer visible on the listing. Another Toshiba with an asking price of 300 euros. In the listing they refer to eBay being their source, well let's check that. As expected we see prices around 100 and 150, but most being sold as is or as a prop. Oh, and one for 250 in pristine condition. But when we look at completed and sold listing we find an untested one selling for 46 bucks and others for around 100 dollars. 180 for this boxed Sinclair QL seems reasonable, but then 450 euros for this Apple Macintosh G3, which I have a direct reference point for as I got a similar computer at my local thrift store for less than the sticker price, which was 50 bucks. For 450 euros, the least they could do is include a screen, keyboard, mouse, and maybe some software. But good deals are still out there. 55 euros for VIC-20, I would call a little steal. This Commodore 128 appears to have sold for 270, which maybe makes the 300 we saw on the other listings not so unreasonable after all. This one is in working order though. Definitely paid less for my 128 and 1571. Also wanted to include a pocket computer. I suspect that the seller would like to get a little bit more for this computer than 30 bucks. Let's not forget my theory on bidding 30 bucks. These Philips NMS computers tend to always bring in around 150 to 200 euros. MSX is a product line I have not yet really gotten into, but will definitely when I get to archiving my MSX tapes. 100 bucks for this digital deck PC, which I would say 30 to 50 bucks would be more reasonable for. Then a thousand bucks for this next computer, which is a lot of money, but these don't appear on Markplatz a lot and are quite rare, so this might even be a reasonable asking price. This VIC-20 appears to have sold for 15 bucks, which would have put tears in my eyes if I managed to get one for that price, although I own enough VIC-20s at this moment. I don't like to own more than one or two of any type of computer. The Commodore 64 is excluded from this rule though. I would say the average going price for Commodore 64 on Marplatz is 80 bucks, depending on what it comes with. It was interesting to me that this Atari Mega STE had an offer for 550 euros. Didn't know these were sought after. The ST line is a nice Nice line of computers though. Apple's TAM 20th anniversary Macintosh asking price 1250 which is high but an asking price I would never ask when I have the item I'm asking it for outside. Definitely not when you are selling an item that is not really suitable for outdoor use. This was an interesting lot, 6,000 for 40 Macintoshes, someone bidding 3,000 already. It is said to contain a Color Classic in box, which is already worth some money I believe. Then this really tempting heat kit computer, would love to own one of these just to figure out how they work. Someone offered 750 euros. I'm not going to say what I tried to offer for this computer. <laughs> Recently software has become something I'm looking for a lot and seen increasing prices, but this listing was really stretching it, asking 580 euros for 84 floppy disks, which is only 6 euros and 90 cents per floppy, which if that were the going rate for one MS-DOS 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk would mean I could downpay quite a large home. Let's hope this is a typo. Then we have this compact laptop, pretty nice, with the ability to put in an offer. Let's offer 20 bucks. Here you can see the automatically generated message being sent. And a week or so later, this parcel shows up at my door with this lovely compact LTE Elite 450CX to tinker with on a quiet afternoon. Then we have someone asking 350 euros for this Sinclair printer, which they write is rare, but still a lot to ask for this type of printer. Are printers really collectible, I wonder? I have a printer to show in a future video. I really want an XCD sorcerer, but keep being outbid for crazy prices, sadly. Then someone else is really stretching it in this listing as well. 750 euros for this IBM PS2 P70. I believe these are really susceptible to failures, but this one is fully working. 200 would be a more realistic and still high sum, I would say. And with that P70, I want to wrap up this sort of rant or observation or waste of time on computer pricing on Marplot or the Dutch version of eBay, as I will keep referring to it. But what you can also see in the examples I showed is that people are willing to pay more and more for their vintage computers. I wanted to finish off this video with some of my treasures, or all the things I treasure from the Dutch version of eBay that I got for a really nice price. Starting with these new brains, both not working and in need of repair, which I want to attempt in the future. 
I got them both for really good prices, less than 30 each I believe. This Tiros 80 Model 200 also was a great deal for 25 bucks and is a lovely piece of retro tech I want to explore in a video too. The Senyo MBC 3000 was also a steal, which I think I paid under 70 bucks for and already gave me loads of fun exploring. And let's finish with this IBM PS2 Model 60 that I got for free from someone on the Dutch version of eBay that knew I would appreciate it and has been proudly besides my desk for the last couple years or so now. That wraps up my rambled and incomplete explanation on the Dutch version of eBay. I hope you understand it a little bit better now. I can imagine that this is a lot of information to process. On my website you will find a summarized guide that you can take your time to read through if need be. So, if you are among those who made it all the way here, and it's probably not a lot, I want to especially thank you for watching. <laughs>